In the movie The Matrix, the main character Neo is given a choice. He can either choose to stay in a fake world by taking the blue pill or find out the unsettling truth by taking the red pill. Neo chooses to find out the truth. After that, he realizes that he has been living in a simulation-like reality all along, and now he is living in the real world. Similarly, what if this world we're living in is not real? But you may ask, isn't that just a movie? The answer, however, is not as straightforward as you may think. So, what if we don't exist? Can you imagine that this is not reality, but a simulation? Are you ready to uncover the simulation theory? Then like and subscribe to our channel, The Hidden Agenda, because we have many exciting videos that'll leave you on the edge of your seat. In today's world, anything is possible. For example, there are computer-generated influencers. Google's self-aware AI can now come up with deep fake videos that are becoming a massive concern. To the naked eye, it is already very difficult to tell if they are real or AI-generated. Artificial intelligence, without a doubt, is one of the biggest advancements in science, and it has made us question the nature of consciousness and what life is. Although advanced AI is a cutting-edge invention, the idea that our world and reality are simulations is not. Did you know that similar theories can be traced back to ancient Greece? Yes, it can, as several philosophers from around the world suggested that reality might be an illusion. Plato's allegory of the cave is one such example. Let's discuss the idea thoroughly. Think of a cave where people have lived their whole lives, never leaving it. They always look at the wall in front of them and they can't see anything else. They only know the wall. There is a fire behind them and they only see shadows of things on the wall because of the fire. They think the shadows are real and when they hear sounds, they think it's the shadows talking. These people believe that what they see on the wall is all there is, but it's only a small part of the whole truth. This idea can be applied to many things and has different meanings. It can show how people can be ignorant and not want to learn the truth. It can also show how important it is to have the knowledge and how it affects our reality. Knowledge makes us wonder if our idea of reality is just a reflection of something else, like the shadows in the cave. In advanced theories, digital physics is a new idea in physics and cosmology. It says that the universe can be explained by information and can be calculated. Some people who study digital physics think that our world is like a computer simulation. Some of these physicists are sincerely interested in the simulation hypothesis. This theory proposes that not only is our world a computer simulation, but our entire universe is within it. This school of thought has a somewhat mystical background to it. Chinese philosopher named Wan Zhu once had a dream. He dreamt that he was a butterfly. He wondered if it was real or just a dream. He realized that when we are sleeping, our dreams seem real. But when we wake up, we know they were just a dream. When we wake up, we make fun of ourselves for believing in that unbelievable nightmare we just had. But when we sleep, the dream world that surrounds us feels very real. This is like the idea of the universe being a simulation. We might think it is real, but it could just be a dream. So the question remains, are we going to wake up at some point? This is aptly depicted in the film Inception, where reality, subconsciousness, and the dream world are so intertwined that we are unable to distinguish them at times. Elon Musk sparked some debate by claiming that we're most likely living in a simulation, as he frequently does. If technology continues to advance at its current rate, he claims, it will soon be impossible to tell video games apart from reality. Is it possible that we are all characters in somebody's computer system? Do we imitate cosmic overlords in the same way that we imitate Fortnite characters? What do you think? Let's talk about a few more ideas. Video games in which we handle a particular character on the display and go on various adventures are popular all over the world. However, as technology progresses, program graphics and detailing improve, and characters on screens begin to appear more real than it has ever been. How do we know if we're actively participating in a simulation or not? Do the characters in our video games realize they are not real people, but rather parts of software programs coded with zeros and ones? How do we know what is real? Reality is defined as anything that we can interpret with our five senses. What senses do video game characters have? An artificial system, like our brain's neural network, can be monitored by an artificial neural network, or ANN, 
which has advanced significantly in recent years. It is theoretically possible that we are currently in a simulated world and that we can simulate a time in the near future where we will have technological advancement. The question of how we can achieve it and whether it is truly feasible remains. What are your thoughts on the simulation theory of reality? Do you think we're just actors in a technologically advanced simulation? Nick Bostrom, a Swedish philosopher trained in theoretical physics, computational neuroscience, logic and artificial intelligence, has been recognized for popularizing computer simulation theory. He proposes that there is a good chance that all of humanity will develop to the point where we will be able to simulate our forefathers. The post-human phase is described as the point when humans will have achieved technological supremacy and will be able to build massive supercomputers with enough processing power and memory to run simulations of the planet's history. In 2003, philosopher Nick Bostrom proposed the simulation hypothesis. Rather than simply asserting that we are in a simulation, Bostrom proposes three hypotheses, one of which is almost certainly correct. They are 1. The fraction of civilizations that reach a stage capable of running simulations good enough to fool their inhabitants is very close to zero. 2. The fraction of such civilizations that are interested in running simulations is very close to zero. 3. The faction of all people with our kind of experiences that are living in a simulation is very close to 1. If you think about that, some of our future societies will be able to do complex simulations but won't be interested, statement 2 is correct. But if you think someone will someday figure out how to do these simulations and at least one person will succeed, then statement 3 is likely true. If these simulations are possible and used, it's more likely that we are in a simulation because there will be more simulations than real realities. Right now, we can make bigger and more complex simulations because of the improvements we've made in our current simulations. A few years ago, a game called No Man's Sky became popular because it has a universe that is completely random and open. This means that we don't know if propositions 1 and 2 are true. The last number is 3. If our reality is not real, should we care about being good or following rules? In the real world, our actions do not change the universe, and we know this. But we are not saying that people who do bad things are living outside of the simulation. In video games like Grand Theft Auto or other open world games, do you think about morals when you know there won't be any real consequences? Bostrom says that people should act properly even though they think they're in a simulation. He believes there's always the chance that their idea might be wrong. But if we believe that we're in a simulation, then what we do won't matter. Science is making simulations more believable with advances in virtual reality, biotechnology, artificial intelligence, and other fields. We can see that technology is making it possible to show the world better and better, both now and in the past. And we keep making simulations, there might not be a way to tell the difference between reality and simulation. That would mean that we've made things with minds of their own. Will there ever be a time that we don't have to think about what might happen in the future? Instead, can we just run computer programs that show us all the possible things that could happen? Or are we living in a computer program right now, made by a type of creature that existed before humans, so they can watch how the universe changes? Or are we just part of a science experiment for someone who doesn't follow the rules of science? Or are we playing a game for a powerful being who can stop it at any moment? So many questions without any specific answer. And that's a wrap. Let us know your thoughts in the video in the comments below. If you liked it, give us a like and hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you'll never miss a beat. Thanks for tuning in, folks. We'll catch you next time.